Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, so today, as I said, we'll be starting a new series of teaching. I've talked about the, the title to give it several titles, but I think them. You know, let me, let me just call it God Approved Christian Dressing. God Approved Christian Dressing. Amen. Christian Dressing, how Christians should dress. So how should Christian dress? What kind of clothes should they wear? What are, what are the kind of clothes they are not supposed to wear? Should they use jewelry? Should they not use jewelry? Do those things matter? What about hairstyles? Dressing. Amen. Amen. I hope you, are, you want to know. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we we start. We cannot finish it in one, so we'll, we'll, we'll take it slow, you know, bit by bit. Amen. Amen. Uh, some of the things I'm going to explain, they are not new to those who have been coming to this church a long time. They are not totally new. But I believe the Lord wants me to lay emphasis on these things. So how does God want us to dress? How does he want us to dress? Let's know from the Bible. We will not use, um, you know, doctrines of men. We want to look at the Bible, what the Bible actually says. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's start from the beginning. Let's learn from the beginning. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Chapter 3. Because when God created man, we know, let's look at Genesis chapter 2, we look at verse 25. Genesis chapter 2, verse 25. Genesis chapter 2, verse 25. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Did you hear that? Both of them were naked. There was no clothes whatsoever on them. Yet, there was no shame. Hello? They were living together in the garden. No clothing at all. Which means, when God created man and women and woman, there was no clothing on there was nothing like cloth on them and that's to tell you something god is not afraid of human nakedness because some people feel that the reason why we wear cloth or why some people will preach and tell you oh you should cover yourself tie your scarf and wear long dress maybe because of angels or because of god or things like that and they think that it annoys God. Your nakedness doesn't annoy God because He created you naked. So, human, human nakedness does not annoy God, it doesn't embarrass God. It doesn't move God. Hello? The Bible says both of them were, they were naked, but they were not ashamed. But one day, after they sinned, Hello? After they sinned, they did what God asked them not to do. 
The Bible says, after they ate that fruit, which they were commanded not to eat, their eyes were open. Look at chapter 3, verse 7. Then the eyes of both, that is both of them, were opened, and they knew that they were naked. They realized that they were naked. Initially, they did not know that they were naked. But now they know that they were naked. And their next action shows us something entered into their lives. Something that wasn't there before. Now, in chapter 2, verse 25, the Bible says both of them were naked and were not what? They were not ashamed of each other. But now, their eyes been open after they sinned. Now, shame entered. Shame came in. Now, he says, and they sold fig leaves together. They sold what? See that uh, sowing seamstress and sowing started in the garden. <laughs> Started. That's the genesis of Sim, eh? Eh, Madam and uh, Oga gave clothing. You see, say on our walk. See where is that? If not before sin, we for know they have you people. <laughs> but now from sin that they chop. Oh. Yes. No see them. If no, if no before sin. Oh God. What do you do for these people now? Amen. <laughs> 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 Amen. He said, and they sold fig leaves together and made themselves, that is, they made for themselves loin clothes. Loin clothes. You know, you know what is called loin clothes? Yeah. Something just to wrap their private part. You see that? See where you began. So that was the first thing that they gathered together. To, what was the purpose of the loin cloth now? To cover their nakedness because of what? Shame. Are you getting it now? Now when they put the fig leaves together, you know fig leaves, Huh? Fig leaves, is it something durable? It will dry and to expire. And God, whom they offended, whom they sinned against, to you for you to see how gracious God is, even though they sinned against God, yet in mercy, God did not leave them like that and say, Well, now you're now you're all happy that one. No, he knew that now that they are out outside the garden, they are outside his will, they will suffer, but in mercy. It covered them Amen. with something better. Hallelujah. 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 Now, if you go to verse 21, verse 21 of that same Genesis chapter 3, and verse 21. Are you there? Oh, brother, where's your Bible? Oh, get in my Bible. Amen. The book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 21 says, And the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments. See, this one is different. It's not loin clothes. This one is what? Garment. The word garment in Hebrew, it connotes something that is wrapped over the body. It's not just something you tie up around your, like those people in the, uh, uh, you, know, you know, stone age. And they cover, they just cover their private. That's what they did with their fig leaves. You understand? Huh? But this one, God made for them what? Garments of what? Skins. 
and clothed them. You see the word clothed. Now there is, there is what? Clothing. The other one was not clothed. It was just a covering. It was something to cover their shame. But now, God himself provides through what? Clothing. The horrible one. One that will last them even on their life because it's made of what? Skin. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we see that the first clothing that God, that man wore, was made by who? Was made by who? The one that man made for himself. Is it something good? Was it good? Was it durable? It, it covered their nakedness, but it was not proper. Was it proper? Was it really something that is reliable? But the one God gave to them, how do you think about that one? I think it's far, far better. Is that not so? There's a meaning to that one. That's what we want to learn now. Hello. You see, when man sins and he tried to cover himself, he cannot, he cannot really cover himself because the wind will blow and fig leaf will what? fall. Nakedness will still be exposed. But God is the only one who can truly cover you. He was saying, He that covers his sin shall not prosper. But he who confesses it and forsakes it, he will receive mercy. So the clothing, the garments of skin that God gave to them was his mercy. Towards them. And over the years, clothing served several purposes. Sometimes, you know, for today we know that our clothing sometimes tells, reveals our nationality. Is that not so? Where we come from. Is that not so? You know, when you see a Ghanaian man, you will notice a Ghanaian man. Say South Africa man in his traditional clothes. Is that not so? Hello? Hi. Also, our dresses now, uh, what we wear now, also can tell us, can reveal our vocation. What we do, our job, our profession. And also, our dressing can also talk about the occasion that we are involved in, what we are doing, like wedding or, you know, some other thing. But the reason why I want us to understand what I call God approved Christian dressing is because if we don't understand these things, we will either fall into the error of false holiness, what I call false holiness, false righteousness. You understand? Are people who say, oh, don't wear this, don't wear that, this, and God is against this. You know, those kind of stuff. But when you have the knowledge of the truth, you'll be free from such nonsense. Mm-hmm. 
Now, um, as I said, your cloth, your your dress, what you wear, can tell us your kind of job or the kind of person you are. Now, for example, if you look at Genesis again. Genesis chapter 38. Something happened in Genesis 38. If we look at verse uh, 14, uh, something happened in verse 14 and 15. Um, something happened in that place. Uh, it's about uh, one of the sons of Jacob called Judah. Uh, Judah saw a woman, and that woman. Um, she was dressing, she changed a kind a dressing. She was a widow, you understand. Now, if you look at verse 14, it says, She took off, she took off a widow's garments. Widow's what? So it means there is a kind of garment that widows wear, those who have lost their husbands. So there's a kind of garment they wear that you will know that without them talking, when you see that you know this one is a widow, this one has lost a Husband. So that's why I said your dress can speak for you. Amen. Amen. Verse 14 to 15, that's what I said. 14 to 15. Uh -huh, correct. Now, if you look at it, the Bible now tells us that she now went to put on a veil and dress in such a way that when Judah saw her, in verse 15, he says, when Judah saw her, he thought she was a prostitute. You see that? He thought she was what? Because of what? The way she dressed. That's why English people say, as you dress, you will be what? Addressed. You understand? So, without her saying, I'm a prostitute, there, there, there was a way prostitutes dressed in that community. So she, this woman changed a widow's, she was a widow, but she removed the widow's uh, garments, uh, the widow's clothing, and put on the clothing or, or garment of what? A prostitute. If you go to Proverbs chapter 7, Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10 Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10 Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10 I hope you are following this is Bible teaching verse 10 says and behold the woman meets him dressed as what? Dressed as what? A prostitute. Dressed as a prostitute. Wily of heart. So a woman met this young guy and a dressing tells us who she was. A prostitute. Hello? Which means in every society there is a way a prostitute dresses. And if you dress like that, you will be addressed like that. Are you following? So if you dress as a prostitute or like a prostitute, then don't be surprised if people start uh, giving you signal or calling you as they call prostitutes. Hello? So our sisters, you've got to be very smart in the way you dress. Amen? 
You are, this is your this is the, uh, an airway community. So she know how prostitutes are identified. I, I remember years ago, long years ago, I think 1996, um, when I was going for my national service, and uh, um, I got to northern part of Nigeria late in the night, and um, you know I. I I have to sleep at the, that at that station. I have to sleep there overnight because the vehicle got there very late. So I couldn't continue my journey. So I had to sleep there. There was no hotel. It was in the north, far north. There was no hotel around. So I have to sleep at the station. So in the night, I saw some women, some young, young girls. They were roaming in the night. I was wondering, why are these young ones just roaming? And they, they, my fellow passenger that we were together, he said, oh, you see that one? Don't call that one. That one is a married woman. Do you see this one? It's a prostitute. I said, how do you differentiate? He now told me there is a way prostitutes dress here. They, are, they have their, the way they tie their scarf and the way they tie everything. That one is a prostitute. That one is a prostitute. Okay. So I now realize, okay, this one is a prostitute. This one is a So there is a way prostitute dressed in that community. You understand? That's my point. Amen. Amen. So your dressing speaks much about you. It says a lot about you. Hello? So you don't say dressing doesn't matter. Of course it matters. It matters. Hello? It matters. Because it can pass a wrong message about who you are, your personality, your identity, you understand, to people. You have to be very careful. Let's see a practical example in the Bible of mistaking identity because of dressing. The book of um, Exodus chapter 4 Exodus chapter 4 Exodus chapter 4 see Moses you know he had um, realized sorry I wanted to say chapter 2 I said chapter 4 Exodus chapter 2 Exodus chapter 2 Exodus chapter 2 not chapter 4 chapter 2 Exodus 2 you see, Moses, you know, his father and mom, eh? you remember? They are Jews. They are Israelis. His father's name, Amram. His mother's name, Jacobet. You know, so both of them, Levi, they are of the Levi tribe. They came together and they gave birth to Moses. But because of the, the, you know, the genocide that was happening at that time um, by, the, by the Egyptians, they had to give him away. You remember the story? So, what I want you to remember is that his parents uh, were what? Israelis. Are they not? So, he was an Israelite. He was an Israelite. Full-blooded Israelite. Is that not so? But something happened to him. Now, along the line, Moses, you know, he grew up in the house of Pharaoh. You remember? He was because um, Pharaoh's daughter picked him up and, you know, adopted him as his as her own son. So he didn't know he was an Israeli. But along the line, 
he realized somehow he discovered that he was an Israeli and he decided to use his strength out of pity and compassion to deliver his people and he got into trouble and had to run away so he went on self-exile he ran away from Egypt are you following? But listen, pay attention. When he left Egypt, even though he had realized that he was an Israeli, his dressing as an Egyptian did not change. He did not change it. He still had the you know, the dressing, the clothing, everything, the hairstyle, the dressing, everything about an Egyptian. Now, when you see him, you say, this is an Egyptian. That's what he had, even though he had realized that he was not an Egyptian. But he kept dressing as an Egyptian or like an Egyptian. So one day, he helped some people, some ladies. Some ladies got into trouble, and Moses helped them. And when they got home, the father of these ladies asked them, Wow, how come you, uh, you came back home quickly? Now, that's what we want to read now. How they, they describe the person who helped them. What they call the person. It was Moses who helped them. Moses was an Israeli, was he not? Okay. Now, let's start from verse 17. Verse 17 says, The shepherds came and drove them away. That he drove away the daughters of um, the priests of Midian, called Jethro, you know. But Moses stood up. Moses and Israeli, a seed of Abraham, eh? stood up and saved them. So he did, uh, he, that's heroism, is that not so? And watered their flock. He did something great, something good. Verse 18. When they came home to their father, Ruel, that's another name for, Jet, for Jethro, he said, How is it that you have come home so soon? Now, everyone look at that verse 19. They said, an Egyptian delivered us. Is that true? Is that true? Was it an Egyptian that delivered them? Did you, did you, get, the, you get the point now? An Israeli delivered them. But when they were asked, who delivered you? They said what? An Egyptian delivered us. Why did they say that? Because Moses was still wearing the dress of what? Egypt. Egypt. Amen. Amen. So the Egyptians were oppressors of the nations. They were the ruling power. They were oppressors. They were wicked. They were oppressive. But now, the glory, the praise of the God of Israel has been given to who? Egypt. You get the point now. 
Whose fault? Whose fault? Is it God's fault? Is it those women's fault? Whose fault? Moses. Why? He maintained the dressing of Egypt. Hello. So because of the way he was dressed, they addressed him that way. You see the power of our dress. You see the power of our dress. So if you dress like a hooligan, then they will treat you like what? Oh, a hooligan. If you dress as a prostitute, then you'll be addressed as what? A prostitute. There is a way royalty is dressed. You should dress like that. Because you are royalty. Are you not? In the Bible, yes. Yeah, the Bible even talks about how royalty is dressed. Yeah. That there's a way that the, the daughters of king dress. It shows royalty. I'm sure you've been watching. You've been watching the the events in the UK. You have seen Prince Charles, Prince Harry. Uh, okay, now King Charles the Third. Uh -huh. You've seen Harry and William. Have you seen them? See the way they dressed. I thought the atrocities were at the. They were doing auto I think so. Uh, the 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 atrocities was down below their waist. Is it not? Is that how they dress? Uh, so there is a way royalty dress, dignity. There's dignity. Hello. Hi. Even though, listen, pay attention very well. Even though God never tells us. This is how dress should be. This is the shape it should be. This is how garment should be, whether it should be long or short. God never gave anything like that. That's why he did not describe the kind of garment he made for Adam and Eve. Men themselves decide which dress to wear. And it is men who decide this one is for prostitute, this one is for royalty. So men decide that. So, and as long as you are living among men, you must be conscious of that. Or else you get yourself into trouble with men. So when you dress and you your dressing is not speaking the language of Christianity or a child of God, then people will see you and talk to you as if you were not a child of God. But the question we should ask ourselves is that, okay, okay, which one then did God recommend? Hello? Amen. That's a big question. Does the Bible dictate any kind of clothes or design that men and women should wear? Hello? I believe we understand so far. Okay. Now, I want you to understand something. That if you read the old Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you will never see anywhere where God dictated how you should dress. That is material dressing, how you should design your cloth, whether it should be short, long, or the type of material you should use. There is no, no thing like that. 
But under the law of Moses, we have something like that. Is that something about dictation? Hello? Even under the law, the only person whose dressing was dictated specifically by God was the high priest. The high priest. And, and the, the, so the priests dressing, the kind of dress they can wear in the presence of God that is in the tabernacle in their service was stated clearly. In fact, it was designed by God's own dictation. So so length, so so thin, so so material, so so thing, this eye should be designed. This is how it should look like. God himself dictated that one. That's the only dress that God himself initiated and designed and gave to man. Uh, hello. Ah. But today we don't have a priest and high priest in the game. So those ones, and it's for a specific person. That one's gone. Then under the law, there is a popular statement that people refer to. And they quote that and say, Well, God is interested in how what you wear, like this one. That's Deuteronomy chapter 22. That's a popular one. Deuteronomy chapter 22. What about this one? What about Deuteronomy chapter 22? Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Deuteronomy chapter 22, look at verse 5. It says, A woman shall not wear a man's garment, nor shall a man put on a woman's cloak. For whoever does these things is an, abom is an abomination to the Lord your God. Hello. Now, I'm sure many of us, if you grew up in the uh, holiness churches, you must have heard this scripture quoted. When you go to some churches as a lady and you are wearing trousers, ah, they will quote this Bible verse for you. And they will say, the Bible says, a woman shall not wear a man's garment. Hello. Well, you know, the, the, the fallacy in that statement is wrong Bible interpretation. You know why? In the days when this scripture text was written, there was nothing like trusses. There was not a Every, listen, everybody was wearing long gown, gown like women. You see the way? Eh, skirts. That everybody they wear. Including Jesus, our Lord. Now say we are there was no trusses then. Amen. Read your Bible very Have you there? The Bible said, the Bible said in, in the book of Psalms, he said, it's like the oil uh, that flows from the head of Iran, even down to his skirt. <laughs> a man wearing skirt. Even to, you know, so the, the skirts, the, that's just a long gown. Everybody wear just that same long gown. So, hello. Now, but there was a way they differentiated between men and women. There was a way they differentiated. 
Now, God was warning the children of Israel. It was not about um, a woman not wearing trousers. No, that's not what it's about. It was actually about sorcery. About what? Sorcery. It was the, in those days, the sorcerers, when they want to place a curse on the opposite, on the enemy's army, the sorcerer, a man, will now wear a woman's dress and dress some people, men, who dress them in women's dress. And he will pronounce a curse with his juju, you understand, with his sorcery power. He will now pronounce and declare that these are our enemies. They are all what? Women. Even though the enemy coming are men. You know, it's men that are, that, that are fighting those days. But now they now curse them. They say, the way this, our men are dressed as women. He says, so they are what? All women. You see them as what? Women that you can defeat. So he pronounced a curse. And you know, because of the demonic forces behind them, those armies that are coming will actually become like what? Women. And God did not want the children of Israel to participate in such nonsense, such evil. So he gave them that law. A man must not wear that which belongs to a woman, and a woman must not, so that they do not engage in such sorcery. Are you following? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How that is clear. And also, you've got to understand that there is nothing like trust is there. Because that's the problem with a lot of people. Oh, they just put that trust is there by themselves. The man, the man shall not, a woman shall not wear trousers. It's not there. Oh. Don't have to God's word what is not there. Oh. Trousers is not mentioned there. Oh. You know, when I'm, when I'm, listen, when I meet some people who quote this Bible verse for me, I will say, do you know that everything that you are wearing as a man, everything, do you know there's women version of it, the ladies version of it, including your, what you call singlet, you know women get their own singlet, it's different, design different, for, when you see, you know this is a woman, eh? Even your panties, you know, man's design is different from women's design. Even wedding ring, women, female is different from men. Do you know? Even the shoes you wear, even your belt, your belt that you used to hold your trousers, eh? even the clothes, you see everything as male and female. Is that not so? Okay, so when you say trousers, now we have female trousers, we have male trousers. It's not about trousers. Are you following? Yes. Hello? If you want to even look at it logically, you know about trousers. We have male trousers, we have female trousers. When a, when a man wears a male for a, a, a man wears a female trousers, does he not look like a clown? He not look like stupid? Eh? Abby? Mr. Flower? I think you should try and put on uh, Mrs. Flower's trousers. And let's see what it looks like. Hello? Yeah. I mean, Najim, 
I think you wear your dresses like your wife. It looks like on you or your 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 your, your ladies uh, uh, on the. I think it look nice on you. You make you look stupid. You understand? So it's not about trousers because some people think it's about trousers. They, once they see a lady in trousers, they say, ah, J- uh, uh, um, did not meet after 22 verse 5. No, it's not about trousers. Hello? Even the wristwatch, wristwatch, there's male version, there's female version, is that not so? Hey, so why all this madness about trousers? It's not about trousers or skirt. Hello? It's not about trousers or skirt. If it's about skirt, there are in, in Scotland, have you seen the, have you been watching the glory of the Queen? You see men wearing skirts in Scotland. It's not about not wearing skirt or not wearing trousers. Don't bring that nonsense here. Hello. Bye. Understand our Bible, the Bible and remove religious uh, sentiments. Amen. Amen. So that's not what he's saying. He's not talking about. So don't put into the Bible what is not there. He never mentioned trousers. Amen. Amen. You look at the English uh, suit. What you call the suit? I think there's female and female. I think you have, uh, uh, you have your own. You, you wear suit. Eh? When, if Mr. Blanche wear it, what will he look like? Like a clown. <laughs> or if, uh, if you wear your husband's uh, suit with a tie and his trousers, what will you look like? <laughs> They'll drive you away <laughs> from the office. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Do you know even the glasses, glass, the glass frames we use? You know, female, there's men. One day I entered into uh, optician uh, shop and I saw, like, so I was checking this one. The, the lady told me, no, these are for female, uh, male. Uh, and I look, I said, all ah, oh, these five one are for female. Huh? That they make few women think they're beautiful too much. Waiting now. Uh, you ladies, you know, they oppress us. So. Like, see, see that fine lady behind there, Bro John? See her glasses. I don't know why they know they make male or make it fine. Now only women hold thing and they make fine fine like that. Ay, now wow, women. Hey, you people. Now wow. God bless women. But uh, the joy of it is that now for us. Guys, no worry now for us. <laughs> they, they do all those things now because of us. Have <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, for now, I want us to understand that the law of Moses has been set aside. Christ, Christ has fulfilled it and abolished it. It's no more in force. Hallelujah. Hello. You know, there's a lot of hypocrisy in those who say they are keeping the law of Moses. A lot of hypocrisy. As well as those who are preaching, uh, don't wear clothes, don't wear this. They are quick to quote Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. You see, when I meet people like that, I say, very good. Then I said, um, excuse me. Especially in this community, in our community, in our farming community. And I said, okay, you know, the word of God is the same. It's one chapter. So from the same chapter, I will now pick out some things for the person. I say, for example, okay, if we are not, okay, I want to agree with you. I want to agree with you that a woman should not wear trots. Although there's no, but I want to agree with you. That a woman should not, if the woman wears trots as abomination. Have you? No, be so. Okay. Let's read verse 9. The same chapter. Verse 9. 
God commanded the same law, is the same chapter, verse 9. Chapter 22, verse 9 says, You shall not sow your vineyard with two kinds of seed. Let the old yield be forfeited. The crop that you have sown and the yield of the vineyard. That means when you plant, God gave the children of Israel a command, a law. When they plant, there's nothing like I want to do mixed farm, uh, mix, uh, mix cropping. So I plant maize and I plant uh, cassava with it. It's against the law. And anybody who eats what comes from that field is also eating abomination. Do you understand now? The same law that catch the 22 verse 5 also catch verse 9 too. No, be the same law. You get it now. Hello, are you following? Hello. Then we go up to verse 11. We also jump to verse 11. You shall not, it's the same law. You shall not wear cloth of wool and linen mixed together. It's the same law. So if you want to hold women, say, even though you know I've told you there's no trust there, but you want to, I want to agree with you. Okay, women should not wear trousers. Okay, uh, bro, this club where, where, where you wear, let me check the the label, and then you see seventy percent cotton, thirty percent polyester. It's two materials mixed together. Ah, ah, my brother, the same, the Lord that arrested them, the 22 verse 5, also arrest you too. Mm. Because not the same law. Then the person will not be looking at me. Because it's the same law. I mean, it's the same. So if women should not wear trousers according to you, then you too, you have been farming in your, uh, say yes. Sometimes I ask them, do you plant? Uh, he said, of course, I plant maize. And it will be very, you know, I, when I want to catch people, how do you are you? The, the farm, he said, yes, oh. I plant cassava, and which one, and what, uh, yeah, they plant uh, this thing in between. I said, good. But Genesis, I read, Exodus 22, verse 5, nobody should, con- yeah, he said that one. God said, no, I said, okay, but let's read that one too. You now say, oh. Then you'll not be able to argue again, you'll keep quiet. Then I, will, I said, no, we'll read verse 11 too. I said, let's see your dress. We'll check. Say, you see, your dress is it's not pure cotton. It's not pure cotton. It's two materials mixed together. So the same law. So you can see the hypocrisy that is in trying to walk by the law of Moses. To make you an hypocrite. Praise God. Amen. Now, if you look at verse 12, it's the same law, it's the same chapter. Verse 12 says, You shall make, it's a command. You shall make yourselves tassels on the four corners of the garment with which you cover yourself. That is your cover cloth. Where you want to sleep? Eh? Your cloth. You must make tassels on the four corners. I'm sure, Oga, 
The cloth where the way Madame Flower give you to cover. You get tassels around the four corners. Eh? Evo, <laughs> your own get. Evo John, you they look back. Eh? Your cover cloth where they take cover yourself. You get tassels around the four corners. You get. Hello. The law of Israel says when you make cover cloth, there must be tassels at the four corners. Amen. Tassel is this uh, chilling, chilling thing. Mm. Yeah, it's like like all this um, it's, it's wool. Wool that is you like you tie wool together, plenty wool. Like brush. It will look like brush. Like they you see like that thing you use for mop. Like mop. You cut mop, tie it together, put it on one corner, make you see? That's what tassel looks like. That's what a tassel looks like. Uh -huh, like those ones. Like those things they hang on cut curtains. Those, those things. Uh -huh. You must put it on your cloth as an Israeli. It's the same law. So if you are not keeping that one, and you want to enforce 22 verse 5, you are an hypocrite. You cannot select one part of the law and neglect the other. The law says you must keep all. If, if you transgress in one point, the Bible says you are guilty of all. So put the law of Moses aside. Christ says it doesn't belong to you. You are not called to obey it. You are not called to keep it. And there's no word trusts in Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 9. There's no word trusts there. It is imputed by religious men. And that law has been put aside a long time. God will not crucify Mrs. Flaha if she puts on her husband's shirt. God will not crucify her because that law is not in force. Hello. Are you following? Yes. There was a purpose and a reason why God gave them those laws, but it's not for this discussion today. It's not. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, because of my time, I, I will want to stop here. Amen. So we'll continue next week. And uh, next week we'll, we'll be looking at another popular scripture uh, that people quote to. Uh, we'll be looking at the use of jewelries. What does the Bible say about use of makeup? You know, all these things are in the Bible. Makeup, jewelries, and all the red ankles, uh, bangles, necklace, all those stuff. You understand? Even your hair do, shampooing your hair. Uh, all those things. We're going to look at the Bible next week. We'll look at that. Hello. So we'll see what the Bible says. Hello. We don't see. I I I don't want you to be um religious. Like you know what I mean by religious. Just follow, then follow, follow. No, I want you to have this book. I know what it says about what you do and what you don't do. And when you see, when you believe wrong, when, sorry, when you have a wrong interpretation of the Bible fed to you. You will believe wrong. You will think wrong. You will act wrong. Hello. 
Hello? Many you many marriage married uh, relationships have been destroyed by religious teaching. Hmm? Due to false Bible interpretation. Where the, they said you must not wear trousers. And the man likes to see his lady in trousers. He likes it. Now he said, no, he wants to go to heaven. Because they say one sister Janet, if she had a dream in which she saw people in hellfire, you see ladies in trousers in hellfire. Mm, they were suffering in hellfire because they, uh, then she had a vision in which she went rapture to place because and she took, she jumped up she fell down she jumped up she fell down and she said why ah. then she shake herself she said she was wearing trousers that's why she could not be raptured you see when you hear those kind of stupid stories you will, you will and you know why people have those kind of dreams and visions is because of their belief system erroneous beliefs see what you believe will dictate what you see in your visions. So those who are not wearing trousers will be raptured. So once I don't wear trousers, I'll be raptured, I mean. <laughs> You can see the foolishness of such religious teachings and false teachings. Hello. Hello. Please do what helps your marriage. Hello. Don't say you are doing religion now, dress shabbily like one old lady. You see, when when Pearl saw me on Wednesday, when she came to see me on Wednesday, she was looking like one old lady like that. She wasn't looking at age at all. But look at how beautiful she is this morning. Now I understand why that man took her like that. That man too, he get high up. He high open. He had the fruit, he high open. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want us to understand, as I've said, God approved dressing. This is what we are talking about. So, we will continue from there next week. I want you to know that God loves you. Even if you have done things that are wrong like Adam and Eve and you are full of shame something that brings shame to you I want you to know that God is gracious and good He will, he will never leave you wearing a fig apron he will, he, In His mercy He will cover you properly he will cover you. He will, he will show you that he cares for you. Don't believe those stories that tell you that God is angry with you. God is not angry with you. God is not angry with the ladies wearing trousers. God is not angry with the man that's wearing skirt. <laughs> God is not angry with anybody because of what they wear. No. God is not angry. No. Hello. But as the scripture says, since the fall, we wear dress to cover our shame. Is that not so? Cover our nakedness. Well, if you will not be ashamed to come here naked, if you will not be ashamed to come here naked, no problem. You are welcome. 
Is you? You understand? God is not afraid of your nakedness. Angels are not afraid of your nakedness. But God doesn't want you to be like somebody that when you are working with people will run you because they think you are mad. They will address you as somebody insane. Is that not? Uh-huh. So even nakedness is is addressing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Are we blessed this morning? Yes. Let's be on our feet. Pray. Let's pray in the Holy Spirit. Let's pray in the Holy Spirit. Let's pray in the Holy Spirit. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost, giving thanks to God. Because he, he is a merciful and gracious God. He's not angry with us. He's gracious towards us. Let's give him time. Let's give him praise. Let's give him time. Let's give him praise. Glorify him. Lord most high. Yes, you are the Lord. Yes, you are the Lord Most High. Yes, you are the Lord Most High.